Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to aggregate ticks from raw data. Now, most of us are used to open high, low, close bars that are separated by time. For example, five minute bars are equally spaced by time. But by aggregating by ticks, we can kind of see the price action as each bar would be separated by a certain number of ticks. Now in the script, I'm gonna be reading in some raw data for the SPY, which are the 438 puts and the 438 calls. And so long as you have the timestamp, the last traded price, and volume columns, you should be able to use the function that we're gonna build to aggregate by ticks. So within this function, all you have to pass in is the raw data, having these three columns and the number of ticks you wish to aggregate the data to. I'll go ahead and show you what the raw data looks like. So we'll take a look at the 438 calls. Now from this data, all we really need is the timestamp, the last traded price, and the total volume. And something that's not really required, but you should have is some sort of column indicating the name of the contract so that you know which contract this data is for. Now back in our script here, what we're gonna do in this function is grab the name of the contract. If you're using stocks, then you should place your ticker name here. Now we're only gonna subset those three columns. Now I'm gonna fill in A's for the last price only, and we're gonna fill any in A's for the size or the volume to zero. Now, depending on what the user enters for ticks, we're gonna create a sequence from one to the number of rows in our options data. And we're gonna use a step size of one less than what the user enters for ticks. Now for each of the numbers in sequence, we're gonna iterate and create a subset essentially by rows within our options data. So for instance, for the first example, it would pass in a one. So our first row would be a one. And for the second row, it's gonna be one plus our iterator in our sequence. So essentially it would be the second observation in sequence. However, if we reach the max of our sequence, then we're just gonna return the last row in our options data. Now that we have indexed our rows, we're gonna pass that into our options and create this option subset. So again, for the first row, if we take a look at option sub, we have 133 ticks, but you could essentially set this number equal to whatever number you'd like. Now that we have our options subset, we're gonna go ahead and extract the open, high, low, close, and volume. We're gonna go ahead and C bind or column bind the first observation in that vector as our open price, the max and the min for the high and the low, and then the last price as our close. And we're gonna take the sum of our size or volume and return that as the aggregated volume for that specific grouping. So essentially two XTS, should look like this, where we have the open, high, low, close, and our volume. Now that we have extracted that, we're gonna go ahead and convert it as an XTS object. And this is done so that we can R bind our results into a single object. So you're gonna go ahead and wanna run this function. And as a test, we're gonna pass in our call data and we wanna aggregate by 133 ticks. We're gonna go ahead and plot it and add Bollinger Bands. So if we take a look at the chart here, we now have our grouping and there's plenty of interesting things that you can do with tick data. So for example, in this case, what stands out is this big volume spike. And we noticed that it consolidated afterwards, but had a nice run up. And if we take a look at the XTS object, since we're grouping by ticks or trades in this example, we see that our index has irregular space times. Now if we take a look at our put data, here we have aggregated by 233 ticks. So again, something noticeable are the big volume spikes. And again, we see that huge run up. So you might be able to use this data if you're into intraday price action, where we just want an indication of where the price is moving. Well guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find this script. If you're on there, I'll go ahead and provide the options data so that you can play around with the code. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.